Hi there. Today I wanted to come pop up and, and, and uh, just speak a little bit about why it's really important for those of us who are out there wanting to see a different world and wanting to heal the world, why it's so important for you to focus on healing yourself first. Um, I still get a lot of people who write to me or write messages um, on my social media or write to me and say, your message is always about taking care of yourself and self-love and self-care, but we have a world that's suffering. It's selfish for me to take care of myself. I can't do this for myself when I know other people need things more than I do. So I feel that, um, that so let me start by saying, number one is the people who feel that way, the people who feel exactly that way, that I can't take care of myself, I can't give myself, I can't do things for myself because there are other people who need it more than I do. You are all amazingly, beautifully spirited, generous people, and chances are you are highly sensitive or you are full-blown empaths if that is how you feel. If you're feeling the pain of the world, then chances are you are a highly sensitive person and you're an empath. And if this is the case, it means the world needs you now more than ever, more than ever. And if you are suffering, you are struggling, if you are sick, if your body is breaking down, how are you going to help the world? So my message really is for the very people who are always worried about everybody else but them. The world needs people like you more than ever. And so this is why it's so important that if you want to heal the world, it starts by healing yourself. Have you noticed that, for example, if you walk into a room full of people, um, if there is one person that is, um, that, that is full of energy, that's laughing, that's happy, and everybody is gravitating towards them, it's because they are whole and healthy and they know who they are and they emit this amazing energy and everybody wants to just bathe in that energy. Everyone wants to be around them. Um, that person probably really knows who they are, is authentic, and loves themselves. And that's why everybody gravitates towards them and wants to bathe in their energy. That's what we need to strive to be. As empaths, we can uplift the world by uplifting ourselves. So it is absolutely not selfish to love yourself. I cannot stress this enough and, um, and, and, and a lot of people still have a hard time grasping this because they see others, others suffering in the world. You can help those who are suffering by helping yourself, but when you are suffering, you cannot help others who are suffering. I cannot stress this enough. Um, if you want to see more empathic leaders so that our world becomes more equal and less um, divisive. If you want to see more empathic leaders so that there is generally more equality in the world, it means more empaths have to step up and become stronger. You have to step up and really take care of yourself because you, as one person, you are one cell of this entire organism. Um, <clears throat> this organism being life, life on earth. We are all connected. And just like in your body, all your cells are connected. They're all part of your body. If one cell is sick and if, it's, if it spreads it to the other cells, that sickness spreads. But if one cell is super healthy and lifts up the other cells around it, then wellness spreads. You want to be a spreader of wellness. And here's what happens. If you don't take care of yourself, um, and if you don't use whatever tools that are out there, including the tools that I, I continue to give you through my YouTube videos, my books, my most recent book, Sensitive is the New Strong, through other people's work, you know, what happens is if you don't heal your past trauma, you end up looking through life and the world through a trauma lens. You end up interpreting things um, through the eyes of a victim, as if things are happening to you instead of things happening for you. Um, we need to 
strengthen ourselves to get into a position, into a space of feeling that um, we are creators of our world as opposed to we are reacting to the world outside. And this means developing an inside-out view, which I've spoken about in my last couple of videos. I'd love for you to go back and, and watch them. Um, and having an inside-out view means realizing that your emotions, that your emotions uh, creates your reality for you. It creates your immediate reality. And your emotions is what creates how you react to the world. It's not the world that is giving you the, the feedback. It's you that are creating. That's what having an inside out view is. It's not about trying to change the world. It's about trying to change your emotional reaction to the world. Um, one of the things I want to tell you, if you are an empath and a sensitive person, most empaths and sensitive people believe that they are weak. Um, and you're, you've been hearing messages like, uh, that don't be so weak and if you're a male you're told man up and and you're told that don't be so sensitive and so on but what I want to tell you is that sensitivity is a strength being an empath is not a weakness feeling other people's feelings and emotions is not a weakness it's a strength and you have been receiving the wrong messages from people about it being a weakness it is absolutely a strength because the world needs it more than ever right now Without more empaths, without more empathy, without more compassion, um, our world could be, our life as we know it, could be at the brink of its extinction. So we need more empaths to stand up and heal themselves. And if they choose to be heard, then go and be heard. But be heard after you have healed um, so that you can help to heal others. Uh, because we don't need to spread trauma. We want to spread love. We want to spread healing. That's what we want to do. Why do I say that empaths are strong and not weak? Let me ask you, uh, what is an empath? An empath is someone who feels the feelings of others, who feels the energies of the planet, who feels the energies of others. You actually feel it. Why do you feel it? You feel it because your energy field is big. When your energy field is big, that means that anybody or anything that enters your energy field, you feel it. The problem is because you didn't know this, you didn't know how to differentiate the feelings and the energies of other people between your own. So you took it on as your own. The people whose energy fields are really, really um, small, whose auras are really tight and just close around their bodies, um, usually people who are more uh, self-serving, who are more narcissistic, who only care about themselves, they can't feel the energies of other people. They can only feel their own, and that's because their own energy field is very small and tight and close to their body and weak. And so when you, as an empath, have such a big energy field, that's why you feel the energies of everyone else. Um, it becomes overwhelming because you have been told that this is a weakness and that you have to suppress it and ignore it. But actually, it's the opposite. It's actually a strength. It's something you need to embrace. It's something that the world needs for its own evolution. We need to introduce more emp emp empathy and compassion in our m school systems. We need to have more compassion, empathy, and collaboration than competition. We need to include it more in our medical systems and not just keep, um, not just keep diagnosing people with random illnesses as though they're a victim of their illnesses and then give them drugs. They need to realize the reason I'm feeling this way is because I'm absorbing all these energies and they need to get to the root of it and heal it. From, from, uh, their em from an emotional point and an understanding that it's an energetic thing. So this kind of thing needs to be taught in schools and in medical schools and to doctors and, and we need to stop prescribing drugs for everything and instead understand that especially for an empath or a sensitive person, 
it's because their energies have just absorbed all this stuff and they don't know how to deal with it. And we need to also make people aware, like wh when you start to become stronger and more confident in who you are as an empath, you will then become much braver about speaking out and taking on leadership roles. And that's the time when we can change the world. We really do. Um, we, it's harder to change the world when you're coming from a traumatized, angry place because you take yourself where you go. You will change it, but what you will do is you will like, be exacerbating the fear and the trauma as opposed to expanding the love and expanding what you actually want to see in the world. And so if there's any of you out there who have been wanting to get your message in the world or who have been feeling that it's time for you to launch into some kind of project you may have or something and you have been hesitating because maybe it's to write a book, maybe it's to go out and speak in public or start a blog or create a new website or teach something or whatever it is or go out and learn to become a healer or a healthcare worker. But in your mind, you were thinking that, oh, um, maybe I need to learn more or I'm not good enough and you were doubting yourself. If that is you, I want you to take this video as your message from your guides. There's a reason why you were drawn to watch this video. There's a reason why you were called or why it popped up for you today. And the reason is that today, now is the time for you to make that change. Now is the time for you to do this. Now is the time for you to take your voice out, whether it's in your own way, your voice, whether it's about speaking up within your family or speaking up within your workplace or speaking out to the world at large, whatever it is, take this as your message. And um, I would be happy to take questions if there are any, but I also would love to draw your attention to an interview that I did with the wonderful Lee Harris um, and we've uploaded it on my YouTube channel as well. So please look out for it. Uh, it's an interview with Lee Harris, and uh, it was a beautiful conversation that we had. I also wanted to mention that my sanctuary is a place where we nurture and support these traits, and, um, and basically where we teach empaths not only how to heal themselves and navigate this world fearlessly, but also to impact the world if they choose to do so. So um, please check out my online sanctuary. We'll include the link with this video. Uh, and uh, it's, it is for gentle souls like yourselves. Gentle souls need to be heard. Unfortunately, the loudest voices in our world right now, the loudest voices on the media and so on, are not always the voices that are best for us. They're not always right. They're not always what we need to hear. But because they are the loudest, we take them as truth, and our lives go into turmoil. And as empaths, we start to feel it viscerally in our bodies. And so this is me encouraging you to know that you don't have to take on other people's energies. Please get strong in your own healing. Um, Abby, do we have any questions at all? Yes, so I know you all can't hear Abby speak, so somebody has posted that they're having trouble with their boss, and they are, and that person who's having trouble with their boss is an empath, and they're not sure how to deal with the situation. So when you're, so the thing is that um, one of the things that, that actually really work uh, for an empath, now bear in mind as an empath, you probably conflict avoidance. You're probably, not wanting to speak out and talk to your boss, or maybe your boss is a bully. I was in that situation before, and I used to get paralyzed with fear uh, when, I had, when I felt I had to face him or talk to him about something. Your boss could be a him or a her, I don't know. But um, if I had known this, what I'm about to tell you back then, um, I think it would have helped me a lot. What I do is I actually visualize the person that I am having an issue with. And 
Um, you could do it at night before you go to bed or in the morning before you go to work and pretend you are talking, your higher self is talking to that person's higher self. And it could be anyone. In your case, it's your boss. But it could be someone like um, a partner or an ex-spouse or someone who you're having trouble with and you have shared children maybe and somebody you feel is being really unreasonable and difficult and you're at your wit's end as to how to deal with them. Uh, what I would do is I would sit still somewhere, it could be out in nature, um, it could be at, in your home, and visualize that your higher self has left your, your, your soul has left your body, so this is your higher self, and your, that other person, their higher self, uh, or their soul has left their body, and now both of your higher selves are communicating with each other. And, and if you want to play music in the background, you can do that. Sometimes I find music helps me to get into this state. And now, what I would ask you to do is have your higher self ask their higher self, why are you doing this? What is your agenda? Why are you being this way? Uh, and then have them get into a conversation and remember one thing. When we are out of our bodies, we leave behind all our stuff, all our layers, our cultures, our layers of conditioning, our traumas, and all the things that we've accumulated during this lifetime. We leave that behind. And so it's just two pure essences having a conversation. And, um, and then remember also that our pure essences are pure love. They're filled with love. So I would like your higher self to have a conversation with their higher self and come from a place of pure love. And it's interesting what will come of it because you are a lot more perceptive than you think. When you're dealing with somebody who is affecting your energy and making you feel all um, negative and low and depleted or traumatized or anything, it means their energy is entrenched with yours. So you can, that means you have access to their energy. So your soul can actually have a real dialogue with theirs. So just close your eyes and allow them to have the dialogue and listen to what their soul has to say. And then feel compassion for them, but it doesn't mean that you allow yourself to be a doormat. Feel compassion for them, but allow your soul to tell them what, it, what you are really feeling. So your soul will be saying, I'm so sorry to hear about your pain from your childhood and all this, which is causing you to feel so suspicious of my actions. But I want you to know that I need to do the things this way. This is me being me. I don't have an agenda against you. You know, whatever it is, have that conversation with them. And even if it doesn't, if you don't notice a huge difference the first time, but believe me, people who I've told to do this, they've said they've gone in and faced the person and the energy was completely different, even from the first time. But if it doesn't happen the first time you face them, don't worry. Try it a couple of times. It will shift. It really will shift. What will happen is your energy towards them will shift. They will feel it and their energy will start to shift. So let's say you are here and they're here. That's why you're not meeting. When you do it a couple of times, this is what will start to happen. And the two of you will be able to communicate a lot better and uh, it will really shift. So do try that and I'm curious to know what happens. So Thank you all so much for tuning in today. I look forward to either seeing you next week but, um, or in one of my platforms, like on my, in my sanctuary. I'd love to see you in my sanctuary or just on my social media platforms. If you loved this video, please click like if you're on Facebook. Um, and if you're on YouTube, um, please hit subscribe and click like. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Thank you all so much. Bye.